Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Damien's Midweek Markets, the show where I talk about what's been going on in investment markets and what to look out for in the days and weeks ahead. Now, what a turnaround we've seen this week, because this week will be known as the week that tech stocks really took off. Now, if we focus on technology stocks to start with, on the on Monday, the NASDAQ 100 rallied 3% at one point on the day, which is an incredible rally. And in fact, it was the best day since March. Now, because all the big technology stocks out there rallied by large numbers, so take Apple, for example, it drove up the wider S&P 500 as well. So we saw the S&P 500 rally by 2% on Monday alone. So what was the catalyst for this rally higher, this burst higher from technology stocks? Now, one of the catalysts was hope, really, the optimism surrounding the US election, but particularly surrounding the potential for stimulus from the US government. And that caused a sense of euphoria in US equity markets that wasn't really seen in other markets, for example, the UK. And it pushed the stock market higher. And what we saw was what is known as a short squeeze in the technology stock. So technology stocks have not really been that loved since the sell-off in September. We've seen other parts of the market start to push higher. We're talking about other sectors where people have rotated out of technology stocks and gone into those perhaps more cyclical areas of the US stock market. We saw a lot of that with with institutional investors. And it meant that there were a lot of people who were essentially betting that we were going to see another sell-off in technology stocks. The problem with that is, when they burst higher, it means those people have to cover their short bets. And it therefore means that in order to do that, they essentially buy technology stock, which then pushes technology stocks higher and you end up getting a virtuous circle if you own technology stocks, then it pushes the market higher and higher to all those short bets. They're effectively squeezed out of the market, which is hence the name of short squeeze. So anybody who was betting against technology stocks, the big tech stocks, we're talking things like Microsoft, we're talking about Apple, we're even talking about things like Amazon, had a very painful week this week and missed out on that rally. Now I hold a portion of my portfolio in these stocks. Obviously, that was a very positive outcome for my 50k portfolio. And of course, Apple announced a new iPhone this week. So there was always that sense of optimism around the Apple announcement. And of course, with increasing coronavirus cases, some of the narratives have gone back to the working from home narratives. We started to see even in the UK more lockdowns or regional lockdowns. So you can choose your narrative, but the point is that we had a section of the market that was largely unloved, people betting against it. And when the tide turns, it can be incredibly violent if you're caught on the the wrong side. Now, the S&P 500 has therefore pushed up towards its all-time highs, in fact. We got back above the 3,500 level and we are now around about 1.5% below that all-time level. We saw the VIX, the fear index, on the US stock market dropped to around 26. So that's come down from where it was last week, which was about 29. The VXN, which is the equivalent fear index for US technology stocks, is still quite elevated. And of course, when the markets popped higher, that increase the volatility. So we're still seeing a high level of volatility. That doesn't mean that we're not going to see a pullback in technology stocks, but they have broken higher through a lot of key resistance levels. But if you recall last week, I talked about the similarities between the end of August, beginning of September and now. And are we seeing the melt up in technology stocks, which we saw at the start of September? So the end of August into the beginning of September, which eventually marked the recent high and then we had a sell off. We could be seeing something like that again. Of course, there is optimism around the US election. And I say optimism and I'll come on to it a bit later, but it's over the outcome and perhaps a Joe Biden victory. The narrative in markets has started to shift towards that that would actually be perhaps a positive outcome for most asset classes, but perhaps not bonds. As I say, I'll mention more on that in a second. Asian equities have continued to perform very well. So if you look at Chinese equities, then they actually leapt about 4% at the start of the week. And that was as China came back from its golden week holiday. And the Chinese central bank intervened in currency markets because their currency was, in fact, strengthening to try and reduce that strength. And so the intervention is a boost for stock markets. So we saw the Chinese equities leap higher. And don't forget the piece of 
research I've done for 8020 investor members, which looked at the correlations between different asset classes, has shown in particular that UK gilts are a good diversifier for US equities. So they don't tend to perform in the same way. They tend to move in opposite directions. But in the equity space, Chinese equities have been a good diversifier throughout 2020 and the coronavirus pandemic. And we're still seeing that now. So where we had a bout of weakness in US equities, Chinese equities have been actually pushing higher. So it is a space to look at if you haven't already looked at that in your portfolio to keep an eye on. Japanese equities have also been performing quite well, particularly when we saw some strength in the dollar, because obviously if the dollar strengthens against the yen, then that tends to be good for the Japanese stock market. So the message is, don't just think the investment world is the UK, Europe and the US. Asian equities do offer opportunities as well. Now, if you go into the UK, as I've just mentioned here, the FTSE 100 is largely stalling at the moment. It's around about 5,950, which is a similar level to we saw last week. And that's because we've got the coronavirus pandemic. We seemingly have a second wave that's picking up potential talk of a second lockdown, even if it is only temporary. We've obviously got the cliff edge. We seem to be approaching a cliff edge on the EU talks, which is really a self-imposed one by the UK government. And we also needed to have some outcome from those Brexit talks with the European Union if the outcome was going to be able to be ratified and put into law by the beginning of 2021. So we're approaching that. You'll see more volatility in the value of the pound. So we had saw some weakness and it started to strengthen again. A lot of volatility going on. And also the FTSE 100 is being hampered. So if you think about it, what we've seen in the last week is a rotation back the opposite way to what we've been seeing in previous weeks where the UK and perhaps Europe were outperforming uh, US equity markets and we were seeing technology stocks start to underperform more cyclical sectors. All of that has been rotating back the other way. We've been seeing a lot of these rotations that if people are quick to jump on them, they're finding themselves badly burned and getting caught on the wrong side, particularly in the lead up to the US election. So be careful chasing these rotations. We've seen it rotate and then rotate the other way all through the summer and now into the autumn. Now I mentioned earlier about the US election and while the market started to price in a bind and win based on polls and we have to remember what happened four years ago. Donald Trump was actually predicted to lose the US election back then and ultimately won. So we have to be careful basing a lot on polls. But at the moment we were seeing that equity markets have started to rally because they believe that we're going to get some form of stimulus no matter what happens now. They wanted it before the US election. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get some. But equally, if Biden gets into the White House and actually the Democrats control the whole of Congress, that would be a bit of a landslide, then that would allow them to be able to push through their own agendas and actually more stimulus. It makes more stimulus much more likely if we have one party controlling the whole of Congress. Now, on the flip side, you will notice that Treasury yields have started to inch up. So if you've got any uh, global bond funds, for example, that have exposure to US Treasuries, they probably started to weaken in the last sort of week or so, ignoring the currency conversion. But that is because if Biden is being priced into the market to win, then that means that there could be more stimulus. And that could potentially mean more debt, more issuance of US Treasuries in America. So if we have more supply, then that will drive down the price of existing US Treasuries. So if you think of it in a very simplistic way, but on the other side, if we're going to get a flood of stimulus from the US government and we're going to have even more borrowing, that could ultimately start to uh, expand the US economy. So it will start to push things forward. We'll start to see the US economy growing at a faster rate. And that environment, including inflation, is bad for bonds more generally. So you would actually be weak for Treasury. So we started to see a shift in narrative where people are starting to think that perhaps US Treasuries could be exposed going into an election if Biden wins. Of course, that narrative could be prone to change very quickly. We've seen narratives change a lot in the last few weeks and asset classes suddenly rally and fall. Look at gold. Gold has started to show signs of weakness of late. And yet a few weeks ago, people were thinking of buying it because of the protection it provides for the heading into the election potentially. So we're seeing a lot of assets 
fluctuate in price. And a lot of them are actually, if you look at them, stuck between ranges that were recent highs and some lows we've seen over the summer. So there's a lot going on in investment markets. We shouldn't try and be too knee-jerk as long-term investors about what's going on. And of course, leading into this election in a couple of weeks, we're probably going to see a hell of a lot more volatility in every asset class out there. And the other thing we've got coming up, which is quite interesting, it's nothing to do with the US election, it's nothing to do with coronavirus, but we've got the earnings season kicking off. So in America, we're going to see this week the bank earnings be announced. That will give a lot of insight into how the US economy is doing. So we might see um, some market reaction around those announcements. As the month goes on, we get more earnings. The US tech earnings are typically at the end of the month. So people like Apple, for example, will be towards the end of the month. As earnings season goes on, it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to it, whether earnings have been better than expected or worse than expected. And similarly, we'll see the same over in the UK and in Europe. So keep an eye on those. They will start, to, you'll start to see more headlines surrounding earnings and what they tell us about the rebound in the economy in each country and also globally. So that is it for this week on Damien's Midweek Markets. As ever, you can contact me, Damien, at moneytothemasses.com is the email address. Twitter is money to the masses with the number two. You can find us on Instagram, of course, Facebook. Don't forget to join our community, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash money to the masses and subscribe to our YouTube channel.